Hello everyone, I am Dr. Adesh Deep, Associate Professor in Zoology at Government College for Women, Sector 14, Panchkula. Today we are going to discuss about a very serious pest of wheat that is Sesmia inference. This species is also known as Asiatic Pink Stamborer, Pink Stamborer and Graminous Stamborer. It is a moth of family Nocturi and is a polyphagous pest. The species was first described by the Francis Walker in 1856. It is found from Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, Myanmar to Japan and the Solomon Island. It is emerging as an important pest of wheat in India due to the change in tillage system. It causes severe damage by forming dead hearts at seedling stage and white ears at earhead stage. So let us discuss. After completing the chapter, you will be able to know about systematic position, habits, general appearance, life cycle, damage caused and control of sesmia inference. So let us discuss in detail. First of all, systematic position of weak stem borer whose zoological name is sesmia inference. This insect belongs to class Insecta, order Lepidoptera and family Noctuidae, genus Sesmia and species Inference. If we talk about its geographical distribution, wheat stem borer or the pink stem borer is found in all wheat growing areas of India. It is also found in China. Pakistan, Japan, Indonesia, Philippines and adjoining islands. Although the wheat is main host plant of this pest, but this pest feeds on other crops also which are maize, jowar, barley, paddy and sugarcane. It also feeds on guinea grass so we can say that this is a oligophagous pest. As far as general appearance is concerned, adult moth is 15 to 20 mm in length and has a stout body. It has dark straw or light brown color with typical dark brown streaks. As you can see in this slide, each four wing bears grayish black lines extending up to the tip of the wing from the central point. The hind wings are white in color. It has total wing span of 35 mm. If we talk about the habits, it is a nocturnal insect, so it is active in the night. Its lifespan is of 10 to 15 days. Female insect lays egg on the inner surface of leaf sheath and the caterpillar prefers the moist weather to infest the new shoots. Now the life cycle. The life cycle of sesmia is completed in 30 to 45 days and it has four stages. First is egg, then larva, which is caterpillar larva, third is pupa and fourth is the adult. In this slide, you can see in the first picture, these are the eggs of pest. This is caterpillar larva and third is pupa and this is the adult insect. The first stage is egg. The adult female moth lays about 300 eggs in two to three rows on the inner surface of leaf sheath of the host plant. Each row consists about 30 to 100 eggs. Eggs are bead like. They are rounded with flattened poles and are pink or violet on their upper surface and whitish on the under surface. In this slide, you can see the rows of the eggs on the leaf. These eggs has incubation period of 5 to 8 days. Next stage is caterpillar stage, which is the larval stage. So after the incubation period of 6 to 7 days, the young caterpillars having orange-red head 
and purplish pink body on dorsal side and white on the ventral side emerge out. It is about 10 mm long. These larvae bore into the stems of wheat plant to feed. They never feed on the exposed part of the wheat plant. So in this slide you can see the caterpillar larvae with the orange head. As I have told you earlier that caterpillar bores into the stem and grows fully in 4 to 5 weeks. But in cooler region it may take 6 to 7 months. While its growth it undergoes 6 to 7 molds and during this growth period they burrow up and down and migrate from shoot to shoot. The full grown caterpillar is 35 mm in length and enters into the next developmental stage. In this figure you can see that how caterpillar feeds on the internal portion of the stem and destroy the tissue. The next stage is pupa. Fully grown caterpillars undergo pupation. They pupate in a rough cocoon of silk and debris within the shoot or outside under a dry leaf sheet. It is dark brown in color and has purple head. It is about 20 mm in length. The pupation period lasts from the couple of days to more than 14 days. In this picture you can see the dark brown pupae of the sesame inference. Finally, the pupae metamorph into the adults. So, after pupation of 6 to 10 days in normal condition or it may extend up to 14 days in tough conditions, the young adult emerges out from the stem through the holes that have made by the larvae before pupation. In this figure, you can see the complete life cycle of Sismia inference. This is the adult female laid eggs in rows of 30 to 100 eggs, the undersurface of leaf sheath. Then after the incubation period of 6 to 7 days, the young caterpillars having orange red head and purplish pink body on the dorsal side and white on the ventral side are emerged out. Here you can see the larvae. These larvae bore into the stem and grows fully in 4 to 5 weeks in warmer conditions and about 6 to 7 months in the cooler regions. Then it will attain the length of 35 mm. While its growth period it shifts from shoot to shoot and the fully grown larva undergoes pupation. This larva pupate in the rough cocoon in the shoot or under the dry leaf sheet which is dark brown in color and has purple head. And it is smaller in size than the larva. It has the length of 20 mm. Then after the pupation of 6 to 10 days, the adult emerges out and the life cycle is completed. Now the damage. It is very clear from the life cycle that mean damage is caused by the caterpillar. So larva is the damage causing stage in the life cycle of Sesmia inference. As it feeds on the shoot, the central shoot is damaged completely and the dead hearts are produced. And as they shift from shoot to shoot, they attack and kill the young shoots. So the yield is reduced considerably. You can see in this picture that the central shoot is dried and produce the dead hearts. Now the control of the pest. First of all, mechanical control. At the initial stages, by hand picking, that means the infested shoots should be hand picked and destroyed. These infested shoots may be burnt or buried. As the animal is nocturnal and active in the night, so light traps should be set in the field to trap the moth and be destroyed. Pheromone traps are also used to catch the insect. Second method of control is the cultural method. And this includes crop rotation mechanism. Crop rotation means the practice of planting different crops sequentially on the same plot of the land to improve the soil health. 
optimize nutrients in the soil and combat pest and weed pressure. Reducing water levels are also used in controlling. Clean cultivation is very helpful. Therefore, the grass weeds should be removed and burnt. This will kill the eggs and larvae as these also act as host plants. And the last is, after harvesting the crop, the stubble should be collected and destroyed properly. Third is the biological control. It is a method of controlling the pest using the other organisms. It relies on the predation, parasitism, herbivory or other natural mechanism but typically also involves an active human management role. In case of sesmia, natural enemies such as parasitoids are very effective and nature-loving controlling measure. Parasitoid is an insect parasite of an arthropod, parasitic only in immature stages and destroys its host in the process of development and free living as an adult. The tachinid fly, Stermiopsis inferens, was used to control this pest. There are different parasitoids for the different developmental stages. So, X can be eliminated by introducing Trichogramma mentum and Thalinomyus species. You can see in this picture. Both these insects are very effective in controlling the eggs. Bracon chinensis and Appentalis flavipus are effective against the caterpillars. So, both these insects can control the caterpillar stage. Xanthopinopla species and Tetrasticus aegri are used to control the pupal stage. So, by using these insects, we can control the different developmental stages of sesmia inference. Last is the chemical control. Chemical control is initially avoided due to its adverse effect on the environment and applied in the last. So, this pest can be controlled chemically by using 35% endosulfan should be sprayed at the rate of 1 liter per hectare, 5% of BHC or DDT at the rate of 7 to 8 kilogram per acre should be applied as dust. Use of some other chemical pesticides is recommended for the control of the pest which are dichlorovus 76%, forate 10%, quinalphos 25%, trichlorophos and carbaryl. C treatment with carbofuran 35 ST and C treatment with carbofuran 40 F 5% weight by weight at the rate of 2.5 grams per kilogram of seed was also found effective against the sesmia inference. The next pest of wheat is Gujia weevil. Zoological name of this is Tenemicus indicus. As far as classification is concerned, it belongs to Phylum arthropoda, class Insecta, order Coleoptera, family Curculionidae, genus Tenemicus, and species is Indicus. As far as geographical distribution is concerned, this pest is found in various parts of India like Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Assam, Bengal, Chennai and Maharashtra. It is a polyphagous organism or insect. So it feeds on many plants like wheat, barley, pea, gram, maize and poppy. Regarding the general appearance of this pest, Tenemicus is a genus of broad-nosed weevils in the beetle family. So it has broad nose. The adult weevil is small in size, blackish in color or it may be earthen grey in color and is about 
4 mm to 8 mm in length and 2 mm to 3 mm in width. You can see in this slide that it has broad nose and it is grey in colour. Now the life cycle. The life cycle of this weevil comprises four stages. First is egg, second is larvae which is known as grub in this case and third is pupa and fourth is adult. All the four stages are shown in this slide, egg, grub, pupa and adult. Eggs are very small in size and adult female lays about 6 to 16 eggs in the soil under the clothes or in the cervices in the ground. Its both larval and pupal stages are spent in the soil. Eggs hatch in 42 to 49 days. The second stage of life cycle is grub. After hatching, the young grubs enter the soil and grubs feed on the humus and become fully grown in 10 to 18 days. Third stage is pupal stage. The fully grown grubs pupate in the soil at the depth of 150 mm to 160 mm below the ground. The pupal stage lasts for 49 to 63 days. The fourth stage is adult. The pupae metamorph into the adults. The average life of the adult moth is 6 to 14 days. Now the damage caused by this pest. Both the larval that is grub and the adult stages cause damage to the wheat crop. This insect, both during the larval and adult stage, damage the roots of the plant. But the adults can damage the aerial portion of the plant also. They attack the plant at the seedling stage. So they cut the seedling at or below the soil surface. Now the control. Since the weevil damage the wheat crop mainly during the seedling stage, an application of Dicofol 18.5% EC in furrows at the time of sowing will protect the crop to a certain extent from them. As far as geographical distance, the next pest of wheat is termites. There are two main species, Microtermis obesi and other is Odontotermis obesus. Regarding their classification or systematic position, termites belong to class Insecta, order Isoptera and family Termitidae. Genus of first is Microtermis and species is Obesi. And genus of second is Odontotermis and species is Obesus. Regarding distribution, they are widely distributed throughout the world. More than 2,000 species of termites are known. Termite found more abundantly in tropical and warm temperate regions. It feeds upon wheat, barley, sugarcane and other plants also. If we talk about their general appearance and behavioral characters, termites are social insects and exhibits a great degree of polymorphism. The different types like male, workers, soldiers, queens are there in their society. So all these individuals form the colony of termite are known as castes. Colony is built and maintained by mainly the workers and soldiers. Soldiers possess large heads and mandibles and serve for the defense of the colony. Workers and soldiers are sterile and wingless and include both males and females. Wings are present in the fertile males and queens only. That too during the brief nuptial flight. The male or king remains with the queen copulating intermittently and aiding her in construction of first nest. Termites feed on plants and to digest cellulose they harbor symbiotic flagellate 
which secrete enzyme cellulase for cellulose digestion. As far as life cycle is concerned, adult swarm copulate in the air and come down on the earth for egg laying. Queen lays egg which after a period of 7 days of incubation hatch into the larvae which form different castes. Castes mean they may be workers, they may be males, fertile, they may be soldiers and queens. Regarding the damage, termites feed on wheat crop soon after sowing and near maturity. So termites attack the wheat crop either at very initial stage or at the stage of maturity. Affected plants dry up completely and are easily pulled out. Plants damaged at the later stages give rise to white ears. White ears means without grain. So when it attacks the plant near maturity, it adversely affects the grain formation and white ears are produced. So yield is reduced. Regarding their control, chemical pesticides are found quite effective to control termites. The termite infestation can be controlled by chlorpyrifos 20%, chlorianidine 50%, imidacloprid 70% and lindane etc. These are quite effective in controlling the termite infestation. The next pest is aphid. Zoological name is Ropelocyphum raffi abdominalis. As far as systematic position is concerned, it belongs to phylum Arthropoda, class Insecta, order Homoptera, and family Aphidae. Regarding geographical distribution, wheat crop root aphids have been reported from Punjab, Rajasthan, some parts of western Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, and Haryana. This pest is more prevalent in the months of January and February, especially when the weather is cloudy. Host plant is wheat and barley. They also feed on soft leaves of other plants like cucurbits. Regarding their general appearance, aphids are green, louse-like soft-bodied insects with both pairs of wings membranous. Some species are without wings are also found. The nymph and the female look alike except that of the female are longer. Their winged forms appear only in early summers. Their heads are produced into sucking rostrum for feeding on plant sap. The wingless parthenogenetic females are green or whitish green in color. Their body has thin short hairs and the length of antennae is less than half of the length of the body. Regarding the habits, this pest is more prevalent in the months of January and February. It feeds on plant sap especially from the ear heads and tender leaves. Reproduction occurs entirely by the parthenogenesis. In winter, winged parthenogenetic females and larvae survive on the wild growing monocots. The aphid population reaches a maximum in late in the summer. Regarding their life cycle, the life cycle includes three stages, eggs, nymph and adult. In winter, they breed at fast rate and larvae survive on wild growing monocot plants and from there they move to the agricultural fields in the spring then populate gradually starting from the edge to the center. So the wheat aphids breed at a fast rate during the cold weather and reaches to maximum of its population in March. Their reproduction is rapid and it, is, it has up to 12 generations per year. When the crop is matured and the summer is approaching, the winged forms of both males and females are produced. Regarding the nature of damage, the damage is caused by both names and the adults which suck 
the sap from the ears and from the tender leaves. This decreases the crop yield, damage is particularly severe in times of cold and cloudy weather. A heavily matured, well irrigated and succulent crop harbor the pest for the longer period and suffer greater damage. Regarding the control of aphid, chemical pesticides are found quite effective to control the aphid infestation. So here are some chemicals which can be used for spraying on the infested crop. Dimethoate 0.03%, Formothion 0.03% and Phenitrothion 0.03% are quite effective. So this is all about the best of wheat and now in this session we will discuss that how different questions may be framed from this chapter. First category is very short answer questions which you have to answer in two to three lines and sometime it is of one word only. So first question from this category is write the scientific name of wheat stem borer. Next is name the food plants of the wheat stem borer. Third question from this category is enlist the general characters of the sesmia inference. Next question is to which family wheat stem borer belongs. Next is in how many days life cycle of sesmia inference completed next is what is the lifespan of wheat stem borer next question is what do you mean by crop rotation and the last question from this category is what are parasitoids Second category of questions are short answer type questions which you have to answer in a single paragraph. Sometime a diagram is also needed to support the answer. So first question from this category is write the systematic position and habits of wheat stem borer. Next is explain the life cycle of wheat stem borer. Third question is enlist the control measures of the sesmia inference. And the last question from this category is write the general appearance and damage caused by the wheat stem borer. So do all the questions it helps you in the examination. Make a PDF file and send it to your teacher in the college. Goodbye. Thank you.